A recent peer-reviewed paper was published in the American Economic Review. It was entitled Culture, Ethnicity, and Diversity and was authored by Drs. Klaus Desmet, Ignacio Ortuno Ortin, and Romain Vorsiarek. It investigated the empirical relationship between ethnicity and culture, defined as a vector of traits reflecting norms, values, and attitudes. Using survey data for 76 countries, they found that ethnic identity is a significant predictor of cultural values, yet that within-group variation in culture trumps between-group variation. Thus, in contrast to a commonly held view, ethnic and cultural diversity are unrelated. Although only a small portion of a country's overall cultural heterogeneity occurs between groups, they found that various political economic outcomes, such as civil conflict and public goods provision, worsen when there is greater overlap between ethnicity and culture. In other words, ethnic diversity in close proximity raises the risk of civil war and other miserable outcomes. Diversity plus proximity equals war. Although the authors of the paper refer at one place to Lewontin's fallacy, which refers to Richard Lewontin's deliberate misinterpretation of genetic analysis to push a social constructivist theory of human races, evolutionary biologist A.W.F. Edwards, however, helpfully corrected the record, noting that, using cluster analysis, Race can be accurately classified by comparing the frequency of alleles at multiple loci across populations. In other words, the observation that genetic variation is greater within groups than between groups is a banal talking point, because the variance that exists between races is phenotypically and behaviorally classifiable, and these racial differences are profound and impactful. Lewontin's fallacy leads to the illogical belief that mice and men are nearly the same because we share 97% of our DNA. This digression in the point is important, because it'll thwart leftist ideologues from misreading the nature of the paper's findings, which are bad news for the diversity is our strength crowd. In their conclusion, they state, If anything, higher cultural diversity reduces the probability of civil conflict and increases public goods. However, in countries where ethnicity is more strongly predictive of culture, as captured by a high X2, violent conflict is more likely and public goods provision tends to be lower. Our interpretation of this empirical result is that in societies where individuals differ from each other in both ethnicity and culture, social antagonism is greater and political economy outcomes are worse. Diversity plus proximity equals war. The first part of this conclusion is interesting in itself because what the authors have captured but failed to reason through is that within group cultural diversity has a lower probability of civil conflict because one, race and ethnicity act as bonding agents that override cultural distinctions, and two, a large and invasive welfare state is inevitably established to keep the peace in multicultural societies, also known as the Danegeld. The effectiveness of this Danegeld in managing social tension is reduced with the increasing racial and ethnic diversity, because the natural state of most people is generosity toward genetic kin. This is a subconscious motivation, and most people will conform to social expectation bias and deny it if asked. Only Northern European whites have strong outgroup altruism that becomes toxic and self-annihilating in a globalist context. The study has found exactly this. Societies that are both multi-ethnic and multiracial have more social stress, antagonism, corruption, and low trust. In all white societies, you have your geeks, jocks, goths, droogs, skaters, scenesters, preppies, nerds, etc. That's a lot of intergroup diversity. But it's the kind of diversity of thought and personality that does not much interest the anti-white demon horde. They want the kind of diversity that strikes fear and loathing into everyone's hearts and forces whites into a pan-white identity that jettisons quaint personality differences in favor of a racial bloc that can withstand the encroachment of competing ethnocentric races who don't share the white predilection for kumbaya universalism. Ethnic and racial diversity can have the opposite effect on cultural diversity, pushing a society to a uniformity of ideology and thought that will boil over into seething resentment and social conflict. So, having said this, we are all duty-bound as Europeans to overcome facets of our genetic inheritance and embrace the pattern recognition wisdom that allows us to understand all too well the nature of the 99% of the world that doesn't think like us or our kind. The fact that peer-reviewed dissertations are also upholding this sentiment should ensure that you never take your gut feelings for granted ever again.